What is going on my friends, it's Amit, you're watching DevDreamer and welcome to lesson 44 of our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the spread operator. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Alrighty guys, welcome back to lesson 44. So in this lesson, we're going to learn all about the spread operator. So first of all, what exactly is it? The spread operator allows objects and iterables, such as arrays, to be unpacked, or spread, hence the name, into individual values. We write the spread operator with three dots, and it can be used in three different ways. We can use it with arrays, with objects, and with function calls. So let's take a look at each of these in detail, starting with arrays. So the spread operator basically pulls the values out of an array. So let's create an array. Let's say let nums be assigned the value of one, two, and three. And then down here, let's create a new array. So I'm going to say let, uh, let's call it my array. And what we want to do here is we want to use the values in this nums array inside of this new array. So of course, what we could do is we could just say one, two, three, but obviously this isn't the best way to do things especially if this nums array contained a lot more values than just three. So here then, we can use the spread operator. To use it, we simply do three dots, one, two, three, and then the name of the array that we want to spread. So this is going to be our nums array. So to clarify then, what we're doing here is we're using the spread operator to get all the values from this nums array, so numbers one, two, and three, and spread them into this array. So on the end of here, we can add some more values. So let's just say four, five, and six. And then down here, let's first console log our nums array. So console.log and nums, let's save this. Okay, so as expected, we get an array with three values, one, two, and three. And now let's also console log our new array. So console.log my array, let's save, and let's see what we get. So here then in the console, you can see we've got six values. And if we open this up, We've got one, two, and three, and then four, five, six. So these first three values, one, two, and three, have been pulled in or spread out from this nums array. And it's called the spread operator because we're taking these values and we're spreading them into this array. Now, you might think to just simply include the name of our array, like so, but if we save this, what this will do is it will include this array as a nested array. So we've got our nums array first as an array, and then we've got our other values. So my array and then square brackets zero will simply refer to this array as a whole. But what we want is we want to use these values as individual values inside of our new array. And so we use the spread operator like so. Okay, let's add another array. So down here, we'll say let, let's call this letters and assign this to the strings A, B and C. Okay, and then down here, just like before, we simply use our spread operator. So three dots and then the name of our array. So letters. And once again, let's go ahead and save. Just get rid of this one for now. And we get a new array, this time with nine values. So these first three are coming from our nums array. And then the next three, A, B, and C are coming from our letters array. And then we have our original values inside of this array. So as you can see, super convenient and super quick to pull in those array values. Now spread also helps with immutability. That is when we don't want something to change. So for example, when we want to change an array by changing a copy of the array and not the original. So we want the original array to remain immutable. So let's say we have an array of objects. Let's, um, let's clear this and create a new array called characters. Okay, and this will be an array of objects. So we'll say ID one and name Sonic. And then let's create two more here ID two and three, and we'll change this to Mario. And finally, we'll change this to Link. Okay, so we've got an array of objects. So if we console log this, we of course get our array with our three different objects. Now let's say that we wanted to add a new object inside of this array. So we can use the push method. We learned about array methods in a previous lesson. So I'm going to say const, and uh, let's call this new character. And let's assign this to an object. And we're going to say for the first property, it will be ID4 and name Donkey Kong. Okay, now what we can do is we can use the array method called push, so characters.push, and we want to push this new object inside of this array. Now, since we stored it inside this variable, we could simply push new character. Okay, so if we save, 
we can see that now we've got four values, our three original values, as well as the new object that we've pushed into this array. Everything seems to work. But as mentioned, this changes our original array, and we may have a scenario where we want to keep this original array and only add a new character to a copy of this array. And so, once again, this is where the spread operator can help. So rather than doing this, let's get rid of this. Let's create a new variable. Let's call this updated characters. And this will be a new array that will include all of these array values from our characters array. So we're going to say dot dot dot, to use the spread operator, and then characters, comma, space, and then our new character object, which is this one here. So we'll say new character. So now if we console log updated characters and also console log our original characters, we should get two different arrays. So this is our characters array with three values and then our updated characters array of four values. So as you can see here, our original array is still intact with three values. We haven't overridden this at all. This remains immutable now, thanks to the spread operator. Now, an important thing to note here is that what we've created is not just a copy of this array, but a whole new array in and of itself. We've just got a head start by unpacking or spreading the contents of our original array into our new one. Let's see the problem with trying to do this another way. So above these, let's create a variable called second array. And let's assign this to our characters object. And now let's just uh, cut these from here and use these console logs to log out our original characters. Um, and this time let's console log our second array. Let's save and let's see what we get. Okay, so here of course, since we're logging our original characters array, we get our normal three values. And then this is our second array, which is basically a variable that is assigned this characters object as well. So we get the same thing. Now, although it might seem like it is, our second array is not a true copy of our first array, but rather it's simply a reference to that array. We can see this by making a change. So if we said second array, and this time we'll use the pop method. So as you can see here, this removes the last element from an array. If we go ahead and save, this changes both arrays. So we can see that we don't have that third object now. This is because our second array variable is simply a reference to this characters array. So making any changes on this reference here also changes our original array. This doesn't happen if we're using the spread operator. So let's remove all this. Let's now say characters.pop. And finally, let's log both of these to the console. So our original characters array, as well as the updated characters. And as you can see, our original array has lost its last value, but our new array of updated characters still remains intact. Okay, so that's the spread operator with arrays. Let's now see how we can use it with objects. So let's pull in this book object. So here we have an object called book, and it has three properties, title, release, and author. Let's create a second object. So const, just call this updated book, assign it to an object literal. And here then, once again, if you want to use all of this information that we've got inside of our book object, we simply do three dots, one, two, three, and then the name of our object. So book. And now we can add some new values inside of here, such as let's say characters, and assign this a value. So now down here, if we console log both of these, so console.log book, and console.log the updated book object, and save. We get our original book object, okay, with author, release, and title. And then we also get our updated book, which has pulled in these values, okay, title, release, and author, as well as this new value of characters. So once again, just like with arrays, we can use the spread operator to pull out these values and spread them into our new object. Another important thing to note when using spread with objects is that if there are any nested objects, they too will have to be spread. So let's add a related books nested object inside of our book object, like so. And now inside of our new object, if we wanted to add a related books property, if we were to simply add a new property inside of this nested object, and then console log our new object, all we would see inside here is of course this property, because this related books property is distinct and separate from this related books property. If we wanted to use these, once again, we can use the spread operator, and we'll do that by using a new property. So we're going to say three dots and then book dot related books. So what we're doing here, just like we did up here, where we did our three dots and then book to get these three properties, because we're now trying to refer to these nested object values, we simply target that nested object 
And because we've used spread, this line here will pull in these three titles. So let's save. And now in related books, we get all four titles. So once again, just like with arrays, spread provides us with an immutable option. Our original array, just to quickly show you, so console.lark book, our original array remains intact with its three values. Okay, so that's using the spread operator with arrays and objects. Finally, let's look at using it with function calls. So let's remove all this. Let's create a simple function. So we'll say function, we'll name it sum, and we'll take three parameters, a, b, and c. And as you probably guessed, we're simply going to return as a console log, a plus b plus c. So of course we could just say, sum and then give it three numbers, let's just say one, two, and three, and the console should return six. But if, for example, we had an array with this information in, so let's just cut this, and say const nums, one, two, and three, what we could do when we're invoking our function here for the arguments, we can simply use the spread operator and then refer to this array. So this is exactly the same as doing sum one, two, three. So once again, let's save and we get six in the console. Okay guys, so that's all about the spread operator. Let's go ahead and summarize. The spread operator allows us to unpack or spread out the values of objects and arrays. It helps with immutability, that is when we don't want to alter or change the original array or object. And finally, we can use the spread operator with function calls to use a list of array values as the argument, like we've done here. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So quite a lot for this lesson, we've got four tasks in total. For task one, I want you to create an array of three colors and use the spread operator to copy these into a new array along with three new colors and then console log the whole lot to the console. And let's just do these as we go through them. So um, let's create this new array down here. So I'm going to say const colors and let's just give ourselves some space again. And let's go for three colors. We're going to say red, yellow, and blue. Okay, and then we need to create a new array with three new colors and then use the spread operator to pull in these values. So down here, we'll say const more colors. It's an array. We'll use the spread operator, so dot, 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 and then the name of our array, which is colors. So again, this pulls in these values. Now let's add three more colors. We'll go for orange, green, and purple. And now we need to log everything to the console. So console.log, more colors, let's save. And we get our new array with our original values, orange, green, and purple, but also using the spread operator, we've pulled in our colors array values of red, yellow, and blue. Cool, for task number two, we need to see what will happen to our new array if we use the pop method on our original array. On our original array, we're gonna say colors.pop, which remember removes the last value inside of our array. And if we save, we can see the expected result, which is our new array remains intact. Remember, spread helps with immutability. So next we need to create a copy of the following object. So this one right here. And then we need to add a new property to occupation. So this nested object over here and ensure that the copied object contains all the information. So down here then, let's just remove all this. So we need to create a new object. So I'm gonna say const updated user. We'll use the spread operator to get all this information. And then also inside of here, we want a nested object called occupation. Let's once again use the spread operator. So user.occupation so that we can pull out this value here. And then we need to add a new property we'll say employer Google. So now if we simply console log this, let's save. And in the console, we get all this information that we've pulled out from our user object, as well as our new property called employer. And then finally for task four, we need to create an array with the values Jumanji 1995, and then create a function that logs the movie Jumanji was released in 1995 using the spread operator. So let's get rid of this. And we're gonna say const movie, Assign this to an array with the values Jumanji and 1995. And then let's create a function. Function, let's just call this movie info. Okay, it will take two parameters, title and yeah. And let's return this console log. So console.log, we'll say the movie title was released in yeah. 
So now let's invoke this function. So move the info and using the spread operator, we're going to pull out these array values. And so these array values then will be used as the arguments for this function. Let's go ahead and save. And sure enough, we get the movie Jumanji was released in 1995. So guys, well done completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about the rest parameter. And as you'll come to see, the rest parameter also uses these three dots for its syntax, but it uses them in a very different way. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below. And of course, hit that bell and choose all notifications so you get notified whenever I upload. And I'll see you on the next one.